Today I ran into a noble one. Ciao Daniele. There you go. Looking very fancy. I know. Yeah. Today is our anniversary, second anniversary, and I'm taking her to dinner. So this is just why looking nice. I'm so excited. I haven't got dressed yet. I'm not fancy yet, but I will be soon. Hey noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is The Method on Speaking. Today we're going to talk about the worst, absolute worst purchases of my, uh, should I say career as a reenactor? Well, perhaps my collection, my experience as a collector. Over the years, of course, with the channel and gathering more and more information, I started to be, to become a better collector. And I think all of you who are also collecting weapons and armor, I know some of you uh, actual, actually fight, uh, you know, Hima people, Bohut people, you probably uh, use a lot of the content in the community of the sword to try and decide, should I get this sword, should I get this helmet, etc. But at the very beginning, when I started collecting weapons and armor, for example, this absolute beauty of a katana, which I'll show you in a second. This is a good one. When I started, I was 17, which means we are talking about a long time ago when there was basically no YouTube and uh, the information about weapons and armor and what's good and what's bad was not there. So over the years, I have bought some things that I want to say I definitely regret. So without further ado, let's get started with the item number 10 of my list of the worst purchases of my life. At number 10, we've got this uh, leg harness here that you see in plate and as you see it you might think well what well, that doesn't I mean yeah of course it doesn't look like super fancy and one of those very expensive you know craftsman proper uh, armor that you can buy that is really 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 expensive but I mean it doesn't, doesn't look too bad does it in fact this, this item is at number 10 not really because it's not historically accurate or it's badly made but simply because it's the wrong size so these are absolutely massive they were made by my uh, Forge of Zvan, but it's not their mistake. It was my mistake because you see, I've got I've got quite thin legs. And in fact, I should I shouldn't skip leg day absolutely. And this one taught me a lesson, I suppose. But these are absolutely gigantic. So luckily, I've got already. I, I found a buyer for these. Um, they're nice. I mean, I like the final polish. Um, but then again, can't use them, and this was an absolute waste of money. So always make sure to get armor. Uh, specifically for your body measurements. Don't just buy an item because you see an M, particularly with leg harnesses. Uh, that is one of the most unforgiving parts of your armor. I mean, everything in your armor needs to be properly tailored, but I want to say for the legs, even worse. I'm talking about that the knee reaches my shin, so it's actually hilarious. Now, next one is number nine. We've got Lord of the Rings swords. Now, you see, I like the Lord of the Rings. I mean, my girlfriend is absolutely obsessed with the Lord of the Rings. I, I like it. Uh, of course, there she is. Uh, Legolas is one of my favorite characters ever. Um, and so, of course, when you when you grow up, you're still you know very young and you see these swords that are, you know, affordable. So you see these swords in the movies and then you see these swords on these sites and you think, oh, well, that's, you know, that's affordable. It's not too bad. It's a hundred bucks usually. Uh, so I'll get it. But one thing you need to understand and then these are absolute wall hangers. So yes, they will look good on your wall, I suppose, but they handle horribly because they're not made for, for people who are supposed to use them. They're not made by people who know how to make them. They just look similar to the uh, to, to the movie props, I suppose. But the problem is that as someone who loves swords, whenever I buy a sword, I want to handle it. I want to use it. I want to pose with it. I want to, you know, swing it around, if you will. And you really can't do it with these, which is why I eventually sold them out. But I did use them at the very beginning of my channel to talk about the uh, counterpart from the fantasy movies. So at least they served a purpose. At number eight, we have got my very first Lorica Segmentata. So. Did it look that bad? Well, yes, but I didn't know that at the time. You see, um, my this is at the very beginning of my channel. I think I had something in the lines of not even 500 subscribers when I deci decided to buy this. And the reason why I bought it, two reasons. Reason number one is because it was very, very cheap. And secondly, because it was stainless steel. And I already had a lot of maintenance to take care of with all my other blades and, and helmets and whatnot. And so I thought, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll go for this one. It's gonna. I'm going to use it as a prop just to teach Roman history. But the problem is that the further, the deeper I went into how Roman armor actually is supposed to work, the more I noticed that really costume armor doesn't work. Not even to use it as a prop for teaching, because 
you're going to draw the wrong conclusions. And at the very beginning of my channel, I was already prepared from the historical point of view, but I wasn't as prepared as I might be now when it came to actual proper replicas of armor, differently from someone like Matt Easton, a scholar gladiatoria, whom when he started the channel, he was already, you know, full blown expert. It, it wasn't my case. I was prepared for history, but I wasn't an expert of, of weapons and armor per se. So I got this one, it's, it was too big, it was not tailored for my body, the metal was completely inaccurate, the thickness was not proper, it, it was absolutely not okay. It looked all right, for the layman's eye, I suppose, but um, it didn't really work as a proper replica of, of Roman armor, and, and that's why I eventually sold it, and I bought a proper uh, replica, which is the one I've got now, that you often see, and eventually I will get another one again, uh, because I'd like to have two versions of Loriga Segmentata, both type A and type B of the Corbridge types. At number seven, I've got my famous shirt of mail that I bought, I mean, I made an entirely dedicated video for it, it was a big mistake, I trusted this guy uh, who was supposed to make this uh, mail for me based on my measurements but he completely botched the job um, and he, I got this mail that was absolutely it basically looks like a freaking a freaking mail shirt sexy tank top it's really funny but um, it doesn't work I wanted it for my 14th century set and so it was horrible because um, you would see that it didn't work because I needed to wear it together with my breastplate and so you could see that my my stomach was basically completely unprotected and it just didn't work. Um, the reason why it's only number seven though is because uh, at the end of the day now I still use it because I wear it with my brigandine which means that you don't really see it because the brigandine covers my entire body and I'm thinking of wearing it with my full plate armor and perhaps attach a, a skirt of mail so I can still use it although I have to say even the arms are not very well tailored so again uh, even you know even though it's always good to go to someone who is going to tailor it for you you need to make sure there is someone who knows how to tailor because not everyone does and even if you send proper and properly made and correct mail Measurements, they can still botch the job as I have learned from this and you see the whole reason why I'm making this video really is because I mean I'm a little ashamed of these mistakes I may I've made but as long as you can learn something from it if I can make sure that you don't make the same mistakes you know don't don't end up spending money that then it's sort of wasted then I'm okay taking the heat I suppose and uh, even if it's a little awkward it's okay we learn from our mistakes at number six we've got my first Roman helmet now this one okay so again I bought it at the very beginning of my channel where it was more of a hobby than anything. I mean, it was, I wasn't making any money from it. I, so therefore I had no budget. I had no Patreons. Uh, there was nothing still. And I had something in the lines, as I said, not even 500 subscribers. So I thought it was just something that I was going to do just for fun on the side while I was teaching at school, which was my main job at the time. I was a high school teacher, secondary school. So um, I bought this helmet because it was only 50 euros. And I see that a lot of people uh, make the same mistake because it's, you know, the, the next tier is 100 euros. So you see, well, it's twice as much. This still looks okay, I'll get this one so it's very cheap. And the problem with that, with that is that this helmet, afterwards I realized, how did I realize it? Because I studied every single possible archaeological evidence that we have for Roman helmets because of the videos I was making, I realized that this one simply doesn't exist. There isn't one pictorial evidence, representation, iconography, stele, and you name it, archaeological finding that represents this helmet. It just doesn't exist. So wearing this one just makes no sense and it sort of corrupts your impression as a Roman soldier. So of course, the moment I realized that, I bought another helmet which was instead historically accurate. At number five, we've got my very first plate, breastplate and backplate. And uh, like the sort of torso protection cuirass. And this is, oh my gosh, this is such a cheap piece of junk. And honestly, if you compare it with my current full plate armor, and I put them now side by side, the one on the left, both cost 50 euros, the couple. The one on the right is 1,800. And it's not just a matter of money, because you have to imagine that for what I have with the proper one, you can find a lot of craftsmen that will charge you twice as much. So um, why am I paying so much? Because first of all, the one on the left is just literally a piece of metal, like a piece of sheet metal. And uh, the shapes are com is completely 
it makes no sense. It, it kind of looks 16th century, 17th century-ish, uh, but it's completely incorrect. And in fact, it gave me the wrong impression when I bought it, like I want to say 10 years ago, uh, because it hangs on your shoulder like most costume armor does, which means that it doesn't have proper shape. It doesn't taper at the waist like 14th century, 15th century and 16th century armor does. Uh, in fact, you go from a 14th century hourglass shape all the way up to a 15th century and then 16th century wasp uh, waist but, and that is because that way most of the weight will be distributed on the center of mass meaning your natural waist but costume armor doesn't do that because it's produced sort of off the shelf it's not properly measured the costume armor doesn't function like armor it doesn't even look like armor un to the trained eye but it's most importantly it doesn't function it will actually teach you wrongly which is why it's so high on this list really really horrible at number four we have one of my first helmets ever bought and it's this maximilian helmet of course it's horrible, but it's not as bad as the helmets I'm going to show you after this one because uh, it's a really bad helmet, but it's it's cheap, it's off the shelf and the ocularia are kind of too big and it's not properly made, but at least it's not completely rubbish. At least you can put it on and see through the eye slits, they're at least placed in the right position, which is not always the case. And it, in a way, even though again it's, it's, it's not very good and it's very low quality, and, and I mean at the end of the day it costs 60 bucks, uh, but it, it's it's still, it's not too, too bad. It's super cheap and I will tell you don't buy it because it's pretty bad, but it's not good for reenactment. But you know, if you if you have like a fantasy character into a LARP event, I could say, yeah, maybe. But the reason why it's so high on this list is because it failed on me. So in this case, it's not just a matter of the shape, which is of course not historical, but it's because these are actually dangerous. Because when you see costume armor, sometimes even the sellers tell you, oh, you can wear it. Yeah, great. But what does that mean? It just means you can put it on and take a picture with it. Because if you plan on sparring with it, and I mean, let alone like metal sparring, but I'm saying even if you're doing like foam, combat, LARP, a little bit of whatever, HEMA you do with foam weapons, uh, what happened to me is that the visor in action got detached and flew away. Why? Because it's not made properly. The hinges are strange or incorrect. It's, it's not made with good quality materials and so this can happen so whenever you buy an item like that uh, you have to remember that you are saving not only it's cheap not only because it doesn't cost much and the materials are, are pretty bad but and the shape but also because it's not properly made which means don't fight with it and at number three we have got the last helmet thank the gods of this video which is my uh, pig-faced hound skull helmet now this is an abomination not only the shape is it's nothing like the original that i'm going to show you here uh, but um it's actually incorrect so the visor you can't wear it because the visor is too high which means that when you put it on uh, the ocularia which are of course too big as always with these uh, helmets they don't match up with where your eyes are and so you're blinded with this thing so it's even worse and I think it cost me about 60 euros and to this day I'm thinking gosh I could have bought 60 coffees much better value and at number two, we have got two sh swords that I bought and I'm really ashamed of, of buying these because they cost about 40 euros each. So extremely, extremely cheap. And after I bought them, uh, you know, after I want to say a year and a half, I then purchased because my channel was, you know, starting to get momentum. And I ordered my first real properly made uh, sword from Elga Swords Maker, which is the real deal. And then I made a video comparing the two, the bad one and the good one. and my gosh it's a planet of difference not only uh, the you know the, the the cheap ones are made of stainless steel and i'd like to say i mean I, stainless, stainless steel is a great metal just not for swords unless you know again wall hangers okay great but it's not a metal that you should use it's, it's a superior metal meaning that uh, in terms of rust resistance but then again um you know the spring steel uh, it's, it's a much better catch when it comes to actual fighting and uh, also the balance was completely wrong and these are so cheap that both of them broke in action 
completely. And when I say in action is I bought them simply because I wanted to make some videos with some extras in the background. So I could be wearing medieval armor and then I could have like some extras in the background with swords so that, you know, it, it was nice for a shot, but I didn't have much money it was at the beginning of the channel. So I thought, you know, I'll just get these two. They will be in the background so you can't really see them. But oh my gosh, the moment we tried using them, uh, two swords impact. There was an impact. They collided and they broke. The pommels literally detached and flew away, which could have been very dangerous because everything could have exploded, um, which means that they are not literally part, you know, pinned. Uh, oh, it was horrible, horrible. And uh, yeah, very, very bad idea buying these two swords. And I'm so glad that now I have a proper one. But for number one of this list is the cheapest katana that I could ever buy on the planet. And again, one of my first katana ever. Uh, I, it cost me 15 euros. I mean, I'd like to say, you might look at a katana like that, and if you're not experienced with uh, Japanese martial arts and all of that, you might think, well, I mean, it still looks like it. Looks like like a katana. I can recognize it's a katana. So yeah, I'll just have it. The problem is again, whenever you buy a sword, and this is a good one instead that I got from Swords of Northshire, uh, 1095 high carbon steel, properly made, very nice temp, clay tempered. Um, a good katana you can actually use. A cheap katana again, it's something that you should just put somewhere, although I wouldn't, I don't really know why you, you would, because <laughs> if it's a 15 euros, you, you can't even show off. But let's say you're like a kid, you want, you want your katana, you've watched your anime, you watch someone, you just want a katana. Okay, you don't have much money, that's fine. Just don't use it. Just don't use it. Perhaps you can swing it around a little bit. I wouldn't do it because a lot of these katana, like a proper katana, you have to imagine that the blade continues into the tang, which goes all the way inside here, at least up to here depending on the sword, which means this will never detach. Instead, that one was rumbly already, and basically it was literally glued. The blade finished here, there was no tang, nothing inside here, and it was literally glued to the handle, which means that, of course, as you can imagine, it flew into at least four or five pieces. It, was, it exploded on this video, let me show you. And when that happened, we, we of course, we laughed our heads off, but afterwards I thought, in the hands of like, I don't know, an 18 year old uh, kid, and then perhaps they are swinging with their friends, this this could really be dangerous, uh, because again, pieces of metal could fly by. So I would say that was probably the worst purchase of my life. Again, many, many years ago, probably, yeah, probably 10, 12 years ago. I just wanted a katana, to be honest, I didn't have much money, so I thought, you know, I'll just get this one. I like the red, it kind of looked cool, but, uh, uh, as of now, I would say stay away from very cheap katana and very cheap weapons in general because they are dangerous for the user, not just for the people you're swinging them towards, but also for you. But that concludes our lists of the top 10 worst weapons and armor that I've ever bought. And I hope you found this entertaining. What was the worst item that you have ever bought that you wish you didn't? But let me know in the comments below and also let me know which one of these you thought was the most horrible uh, monstrosity uh, among in the list. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this entertaining. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.